everyone, welcome back to the channel. Monica Louv here at The Love Messages. So today we're gonna to be doing a personalized reading with me live on the channel. I will be going in depth uh, into the personalized reading to show you what a personal reading is like. And before I get started, I'm gonna explain how the reading works, how I do things, what are the upgrades and the new uh, add-ons that I've added on to the readings because the readings have changed, okay? So the readings are no longer gonna be similar to the way that I was doing them before. They have changed and they have been enhanced, okay? So uh, before I get started into the reading, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how it works and what to expect, okay? So this is a live personal reading. Now, for those of you that are new to the channel or those of you that are new to my personalized readings that I offer on the channel, I only offer personalized readings live, okay? So there is no me sending a video to you, to your email, there's none of my content is outside of this channel, okay? And the reason why that is, is because there's a lot of people that steal the content and then use it as their own, okay? So in order to protect the copyright of this channel and the content that I create, I am only going to be posting personalized readings on here, okay? By you agreeing to get a personalized reading with me, you are agreeing that I am allowing uh, myself and you're allowing me to do your reading live online in front of, you know, sometimes thousands, millions, hundreds of thousands of people. Okay. So that's the first thing. The second thing is when you're coming to get a reading from me, you're coming to get a reading from somebody who has over 20 years experience in astrology. Okay. Not only in tarot, I also do astrology and human design and I will be including that, or I have decided to include that into my reading. So upon you purchasing your personalized reading with me, you will receive an order number, okay? And your order number is confirmation that you've placed your order and that your reading will be done the following business day, okay? So if you're getting deluxe readings, uh, in-depth personalized readings with me, then those are always done one business day uh, after your purchase. Now, if you are purchasing, ask a question, get an answer, those are done on every Friday, okay? If nobody purchases those, then, you know, we don't do ask a question, get an answer, okay? So it's very dependent on, you know, the 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 presence of you making the purchase. And if you do, then I'm available to do the reading, okay? But I do not offer readings outside of this platform, okay? So if anybody's wondering, you know, Monica, do you do a reading where you're gonna send it to my email? I don't do that, okay? Some other tarot readers may do that. I don't do that. I do my live readings on the channel. Okay, so that's the first thing that I want to um, get out of the way. Now, the next thing, the way this reading works, there is a personalized reading where if you're single, then it's recommended that you get the personalized private reading with me, okay? Um, or personalized reading. It's not private, it's personalized. Or there's the deluxe reading where I talk about you and your person, okay? Now, of course, even if you are single, I'm still going to be talking about soulmates, people who may be coming into your life, what you need to do to prepare for those people when they do come in, etc. Okay. Now, the other thing that I want to also mention is inside this personalized reading, I look at your astrological energies. Now, these astrological energies can happen at any point, depending on where you're at in your life. Okay. So they can be timeless. They could be um, your soul mission. It could be you know, something you just need to know at this time, it's going to be dependent on what you're asking, what you're looking for. I also look at ancestor messages, which is what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be looking at ancestor messages. I'm going to also be looking at um, your astrological uh, influences, three important astrological influences that you need to pay attention to. Okay, especially when it comes to development and transformation in your life. And I'm also going to be looking at uh, your soulmates. Okay, so soulmates, your ancestor messages uh, and the astrological influences. I'm also going to be looking at past, present and future. I do clarify past, present and future. I clarify everything in the um, deluxe readings. Okay, and I'm also going to be giving you advice. I'm also going to be looking at your important message. Okay, so your important everyday offering. I'm going to be looking at that. And we're going to be talking about this as well, too. Now, one of the things that I've added on not one, a few things that I've added on to my personal readings is I will be using the Island Wellness Tarot cards. 
Actually, it's an oracle. It's not tarot cards. They're, they're an oracle. And I'm going to be using romance angels. So these are just going to be confirmations for me. When I shuffle them, they're going to come out and I'm going to get more messages based on that. Okay. So that's mainly how the reading works. Okay. It's approximately anywhere from 30 minutes to 40 minutes. Now, I always go over 30 or 40 minutes because I want to make sure that you're getting the most out of your reading. Okay. And when you're coming to me, one of the things that you need to remember when you come to me, there's two things you need to remember when you come to me to get a reading. You don't just wake up one day and say, you know what, I wanna get a reading from Monica Louvre. You first, number one, have to be called, okay? What do I mean by called? Your subconscious has to feel deep down that I'm somebody who can help you. If that's what you're feeling, then that is a signal that it is time for you to get a personal reading from me. If you're someone who's just like, oh, I just wanna get a reading from Monica just to see what's going on, then you don't really need it, okay? You need to make sure that when you're coming to the channel or you're coming to me, you recognize who I am, okay? Recognition is super important because if you don't recognize who I am, then I cannot help you, okay? That's the first thing. The second thing that you need to make sure that you know before you contact me to ask me for a personal reading is I only offer energy readings, okay? That means I'm here to guide you throughout the energies that you're experiencing in your life. So if you're experiencing something in your life where you don't get it, you're stuck, you can't get past a certain point in your life, things just seem to not be working for you, then that is a signal that it is time for you to get a reading from me, okay? So I only offer energy readings, which incorporates astrology, human design and tarot. Okay. Those are my three main areas. I've been studying astrology now for over 21 years. It is my passion. I've used astrology to improve and enhance my life. Hence why I'm here at this point. Okay. So I've also used human design with soulmate readings. Okay. Cause I also do synastry. So if you don't know what synastry is, it's an area of astrology where I look at you and your person and how the overlapping of the chart, which is, you know, your person's uh, planets and your uh, houses, how they interact and vice versa. So those are the things that I look at. I look at transits. I'm all about progressions, transits, synastry, composite charts, and I'm all about soulmate and love energy. Okay. To help you find love. So that's my specialty in my area. And I'm also very specialized in personal development. Okay. Cause personal development is what allows you to attract the type of love that you may be seeking. Okay. If we're not working on ourselves and we're thinking or expecting everybody else to be perfect while well, we don't do the inner work, then that's when we need to, to prepare for transformation and change. Okay. So that is what I do. So if you're interested in getting a personalized reading with me and you have tons of questions or you want more clarity, we have a live chat on our website where you can ask any one of our customer service representatives any questions that you have. This way, it's very convenient for you if you have issues with your order or you, you need more clarity or you need some sort of questions answered, then that is available to you. And we always recommend that you communicate with us, okay? Because communication is very important in order to accomplish what we're set out to accomplish, okay? So that's the main thing that I wanted to share with you. Now, the final thing that I want to share with you that I think is extremely important, okay, is, is that these are energy readings. So anybody can watch them. It doesn't matter what your sign is. Sometimes you watch a reading and even though it's not geared specifically to you, there's certain messages within the reading that you may be able to learn something from. Okay. So it's very important that you keep an open mind. I do not answer questions from donations. Okay. I want to clarify that because I think a few times I did personalized readings and people started donating and I don't offer that. Okay. You need to contact me. I need, before you even book with me. Okay. You need to give your birth date because I need your birth date. I need all this, the, the stuff in order for me to read your chart. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at your chart. I'm going to study you, study who you are, what you're going through. And it's going to allow me to gather information so that when I do your reading, okay, your tarot reading is only confirmation. Yes, it's going to show me other things, but once the astrology and the tarot corresponds with the human design, then I can really get a full picture of what uh, is going on for you. Okay. So these are things that you need to keep in mind. It's not just a, you know, send me money and I'm going to do a reading for you. No, this is a very, very serious business when it comes to the way I do things on the channel. Okay. So if you're looking for somebody who goes in depth, who has experience, that's what you're paying for. Okay. You're not paying for someone just to shuffle cards and tell you something. I'm here to really get to the bottom of what it is that you need to know. All right. So that's the main thing. Now, the final thing, this is the final thing that I need to say. When you come and book with me, there's a bonus, okay? You get a bonus. And the bonus is 
I will recommend you to one of my spiritual advisors. Okay, so I have spiritual advisors that are available and ready and waiting to help you. Okay, based on your situation, you have a bonus and the bonus is you get up to 30 minutes to an hour, depending on your personalized circumstance and situation. You get an extra bonus, okay, where you sit down with this advisor and they will look at your chart or they will look at your energies. Depending on what you're looking for, I will match you with certain advisors and you can choose which advisor you'd like to see to go a little bit more depth. And that's where it gets personalized. It gets more personalized with that person. Now, I don't offer that service. I don't offer Zoom calls. I don't offer sitting in person. I don't offer that. My business is here on online on YouTube. This is how I run my thing. But if you're interested in getting a little more deeper into who you are, okay, because there's a lot of information you can learn about yourself through Vedic astrology. Um, <clears throat> you can learn through human design, etc. you will be paired with a special spiritual advisor after your reading. And you're going to book that through our customer service live chat on our website. Okay. And that is usually one to two, maybe three or four business days after your live reading. Okay. And again, that's going to help kind of sum everything up and reassure you of what you need to do in order to change your situation. Okay. So that is what I've added on to the personalized readings that I do. It's not going to be for everyone. There's a very limited quantity. And I do understand that the price is a little bit high for, for people, but that's what it's capped at at this point based on what I'm offering and giving. Okay. Now, if you simply just like the channel and you like me and you like what I do, donating to the channel shows me that you appreciate what I'm doing for you. Okay. And it's very important that you keep in mind that whatever you are giving is what you're going to get back. Okay. So you need to make sure that you're not just coming to the channel expecting me to do things for you. Okay. I'm, you know, I'm a person, I get tired. <laughs> um, so, you know, you donating, liking, even if you don't have money, it's not always about money. You know, if you're giving, you know, leaving a nice comment in the chats. Now you all know, I, uh, I close the comment section. Okay. I close the comment section on most of my readings because I don't have time to deal with all the, the scammers and, and, and nonsense. Okay. So if you want to come in the live chat and you want to say, Hey, Monica, thank you so much for your readings. That means a lot to me. It's not always about the money. If you want to donate money, great. That's amazing as well too. If you don't have money or you don't have nothing nice to say, a like, a simple like on the video is always most appreciated as well too. Okay. So I just want to keep that, um, um, out there and let you all know that. Okay. So now that I've gotten all of that out of the way, I know it took some time, <laughs> some time to do that. Um, but now that I got that out of the way, now we can get started on the reading. Okay. So the way I'm going to be doing, uh, the way that I'm going to be doing this reading is I'm going to explain before I get started. First, before I get started, I'm going to say the order number. So this order is for order number 76152 and it's for Jessica. Now keep in mind when you purchase a reading for me, I will say your name and I will say your order number. If you don't want me to say your name because you're somebody who's like, I don't want my name being said, then you need to provide a pseudonym. Okay. Which means not your real name, but like a fake name. Okay. Because I need to be able to use some sort of name. And the reason why I use names in my reading is because I speak to the tarot. Whenever I'm doing tarot, I speak to my cards. That's how I manifest. Okay. Through my communication. So if you don't want me using your name, use a nickname, use some sort of other name where I can refer to you. Cause I don't want to refer to you just as numbers. Okay. So this is for Jessica order seven, six, one, five, two, and Jessica's a Gemini. Okay. And I will also say your sign. So I'm going to say your name, your sign, your order number. Again, if you're somebody who's like, I don't want my business in public. I've had some people contact me and say, I don't want my business in public. Well, that's how I do things. Okay. If you don't like the way I do things, then there's always another reader that can uh, support you and help you based on what you need. Okay. So it's always important that you're a match to your reader. You don't want to be, um, getting involved with someone who is not a match to you. Okay. Always make sure you're doing the necessary uh, diligent diligence, excuse me, and homework before you book a reading with me. Okay. Cause it is a lot of money and I don't play games here. I'm really serious about my business and I'm all about helping you and getting to the root of the problem. Okay. So now Jessica is a Gemini. Je Jessica is, um, you know, really wanting to get the, get to the bottom of, of what is going on. And I'm going to help do it, do that. Jessica has purchased, um, numerous extended readings with me. 
And she's also purchased, excuse me, not only one personalized reading with me, but multiple, okay? And this shows me that she's really interested in changing something within her life, okay? So what I'm gonna do before I get started into the actual reading, because this reading is gonna take at least an hour um, of time, if not more, uh, I'm gonna be talking about your charts first, okay? And I'm gonna show you the charts that I study and then we're gonna get into the reading, okay? If you wanna stick around, you can. If you don't, that's fine too. All right, so, <clears throat> so one of the things that I've noticed, okay, with Jessica is um, this person, Jessica, that, you're con that you've contacted me about and you've wanted answers is somebody who is showing you something within yourself that you need to change. So when I was looking at your chart, I'm gonna pull up the charts here. When I was looking at your chart, one of the things that I noticed, okay, was you and this person, you both mirror one another, okay? This person that you're, um, that you've blocked, okay? You've blocked this person and they haven't been able to contact you. It's because this person has been trying to show you for quite some time now the things within yourself that you need to be open to. Now, I'm going to first talk to you about the human design chart. So if you're somebody who's been studying human design or you're interested in knowing what human design is, then now is the time for you to tune in, okay? So with the human design charts, I'm going to pull up the charts again. Now, if you don't know what a human design chart is, a human design chart is your energy body. It talks about the energy that you have within yourself, your purpose, all of these things that are very important components to um, you realizing your fullest potential. All right. So I'm going to pull up your person's chart. And this is what I'm going to do if you, per if you get um, a personalized reading with me. And then I will pull up the charts and talk a little bit about them so that you kind of know where we stand. Okay, just give me one moment. Okay, so here's your person's chart. Okay. Very different from tarot, but as you all know, I don't just do tarot. I know I do all esoteric study for years. Now, if I look at your person's chart here, you're going to see that your person, okay, I'm going to show you that this, you see this um, triangle in the middle and you see this solar plexus on the side. They're both highlighted and your person has the right angle of the vessel of love, okay? So if you look at the incarnation, I don't know if it's gonna, there we go. So you see incarnated cross, it says right angle cross the vessel of love. So this person, okay, is trying to show you how to love. That's their only purpose in, in, your, in your life, okay? And the reason why you're so drawn to this person is because this person has what you don't have within yourself. And sometimes what spirit does, okay, because we have multiple soulmates, we have soulmates, we have karmics, we have twin flames. Sometimes what spirit will do is spirit will bring a person into your life and disguise them as a soulmate. They're not really a soulmate, but they feel like a soulmate. You think, no, this person's a soulmate. I love them. I want to be with them. But, but the truth is they're coming to show you something. And one of the things that I've noticed in your chart and your person's chart, I'm going to pull up your chart now. So one of the things that I've noticed about you is you're missing those attributes that this person contributes. Now, the way in which you can determine, okay, very important, you're listening. The best way you can determine if someone is for you is that they have everything that you lack, okay, and you have everything they lack. And when you two come together, it creates some sort of fullness, okay? Now, of course, we hear the saying often, uh, no, you should come into a relationship as a whole person. And yes, you should come into a relationship as a whole person. But you also need to recognize that as you're going through your journey in this life, you're, you're gaining skills. You're becoming a better person more and more. And that's a whole important point of life. 
The reason why life happens for people is to improve themselves, to become the best version, okay? If you're swimming through life and you're like, oh, I'm just here accidentally. No, you're here because you're learning to become the best version of yourself, okay? So let's pull up your chart. Okay, I'm gonna pull up your chart. And I'm gonna show you the difference here of what is happening and what you need to know. And this is why these readings I will go in depth and I will explain everything to you. Okay. All right. Here's your chart. Okay, this is your chart. So your chart, as you can see, okay, take a very deep look here. Okay, we're going to look at your chart. This is your human design. So as you could see, you have your will center, which is the triangle here that's open. And you have your solar plexus, which is open. There is no highlights in these two. Everything else except your crown is not it's not highlighted. So what does that mean? Let's go back to your person. One of the things that I picked up was this person has the heart center. Your person has the heart center. And they have the solar plexus. And they also have a line from the heart center to the solar plexus, whereas you, you don't have that complete line. So what this person has done is they've come into your life to show you, number one, how to open your heart and how to be aware of your emotions. One of the things that I've noticed in your chart, um, and by the way, the charts that I do, they're Western astrology, I do not do Vedic, I do Western astrology, just to clarify. So for you, Jessica, there is a um, moon, your moon is in Aries, okay? So you're, you're, a fiery moon, you're a fiery moon. So there's something that you have an issue with, and the issue that you have, and the reason why you've blocked this person and you want them to come back, but you have a problem unblocking them is because you're learning how to express your emotions, okay? So you have cancer, you have Mercury in Cancer, you have on your ascendant the Sun, and you have Venus. So your whole entire existence, your whole entire existence and how you go through life is about wanting love. You come across as someone who wants love, but you just don't know how to express that. And there's this thing where you're afraid of looking silly, dumb, being rejected. All of these things are starting to come up to the surface. Another thing I've noticed with your person and you is, is that you have uh, Neptune retrograde and Uranus retrograde in the seventh house, okay? What does that mean? It means that you're still learning how to accept love and how to accept relationships and be open to issues because what happens is issues crop up in relationships and then you run away or you block or you create some sort of barrier around the situation and that is not the greatest way to deal with these things, okay? Another thing that I've learned about your person, if you look, okay, here's a lesson for those of you who are studying human design and you wanna become more spiritual, okay? You have your person, let's look at your person now. If you go to the bottom, your person has an incarnated cross. So if you wanna know your purpose in life, your incarnated cross is where you're gonna to wanna to look. And it says, right angle cross vessel of love. This is your person's chart. And the vessel of love incarnation cross means that the whole entire purpose of your person that you blocked is to be a vessel of love. What is a vessel? A vessel is a means to an end, okay? Which means all human beings are vessels. Whatever we input is what we get out. So this person was incarnated on this plane to teach others how to love. And the purpose of this person in your life is to teach you how to love so that when the real person, the real soulmate, because a real soulmate is gonna come in, I don't believe that this person is a soulmate. I believe they're more or less a karmic for you. They're trying to show you how to love, how to be open to love, because one of the things I'm gonna tell you right now, Jessica, if you want love, you can't keep blocking it, okay? Otherwise, it's not gonna happen for you, okay? You're a rising cancer, 
you have the sun actually in cancer, you're on a cusp. So you're not only are you Gemini, you're actually um, a cancer with Gemini tendencies or a Gemini with cancer tendencies. And you're all about love. Okay. You have Mars also in the 12th house, I believe, or no Mars in the 11th house which is ruled by Venus, okay? So the what I'm seeing here overall, not to get too astrologically deep in all of that, because I know a lot of you may not understand what I'm talking about, but the main thing here that you need to recognize is you need to go through a transformation. And the more you run away from this transformation, the more it's gonna be harder for you, okay? So that's what I picked up astrologically for you. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna pull the cards out and we're gonna get more information and mostly the tarot reading is confirmation. That's what it is. It's just going to confirm what I've already said to you. So this person, I believe, is, I don't want to say they're a karmic. They're more or less a soulmate, but with a twist, okay? And I don't feel like this is someone who, who you're going to be with forever. I do, when I mentioned to you and I said this person may be coming back, the reason why I said that was because when this person comes back, you have a job to do. What is what does it mean? What is this what is this job that you have to do? Your job is to be open to this person and to express how you truly feel to them. Once you are open and you express how you truly feel to this person, everything's going to change for you. But the more you block this person, the more you block your ability to find love, the more you block yourself from being happy, the more you suppress your emotions. You're somebody who has very heightened emotions, but you either suppress them. When you're an Aries moon, you either suppress your emotions or your emotions are out of control. It's one of the two. And there's a need for you to find balance because what is the opposite house of Aries? It's Libra and Libra is all about what? Balance. And the moon is not comfortable in Aries. The moon is very rigid in Aries because it's, it, it's a, it's a moon. The moon energy is water energy and Aries is fire. So what happens when you put fire and water together? It, there's either the fire is either put out, which is what you're doing by blocking this person. You're outing this person, or you're starting to create some sort of boiling sensation. So do, do you see how it works? That's why I mentioned to you, there's only two things that happens with an Aries moon. They either blow up or they suppress and you got to figure out which one you're doing. And based on what you've told me in our chat, okay, is that there's something here that's blocked and suppressed. Okay. And that is what you're being called to do now with uh, mercury in cancer, it is going to square your moon. So moon squared Mercury means you have an inability or a lack of being able to express your emotions. And that's why love is very difficult for you. So you've got to work on this. This is something that you need to work on in order for you to move to the next level. Okay. Whether that's with this person or with someone else. And that's the main issue that I'm seeing. Okay. So with that being said, I'm going to get into your reading now and I want to pull your daily offering. So what is your important message? What's the important message for Jessica? What's the important message for Jessica? Pick up the pace. Okay. So what you're, what spirit is saying to you right now about pick up the pace. Okay. And we have this kind of the songbird. You can look up what this songbird is and what it represents to you. Um, I'm not a bird expert. So if somebody is a bird expert in the chat, if you want to tell us what type of bird this is, you can help Jessica out. And, uh, what, what's going to happen is you can look at the symbology of this because it's going to give you an idea of how to unlock what has been holding you back. And it says, pick up the pace. So what does that mean? what they're trying to tell you right now is you can have love. First of all, we all deserve love. You deserve love. You deserve to be happy. You deserve to be with someone who's going to love you and care for you so that you can love and care for them. But spirit is saying you need to pick up the pace. There's things that you're being called to do. The first thing you're being called to do is unblock this person unblock this person as difficult as it may be you need to pick up the pace and you need to start unblocking okay that's the first thing that you need to do as hard as it may be one of the things that you're going to feel is some sort of anxiety right like this like oh, i don't know if i should unblock them you know but once you unblock them 
you got to start, you can do salt baths. I always recommend doing salt baths. So, you know, you get some water with Epsom salt and you sit in the bath and you kind of release those emotions in the water because everything starts with the moon. So wherever the moon is in your chart, it's going to tell me everything about who you are and what, what's going on. So I always recommend salt baths, recommending and envisioning what you want by moving in the water. That really helps. Okay. You need to start picking up the pace. There's certain things that you need to start doing in order for your reality to change. If you're just sitting there and you're expecting people to randomly find you and get to you and you're not open to them then that's the reason why something here is not moving for you okay so in order for things to move you need to pick up the pace that's your main important daily offering message that you need to know okay so pick up the pace is your message with the songbird let us know in the live chat if you know what type of bird that is um, and if you know what type of bird that is, then, you know, it's recommended that you look up what that bird symbolizes so that you can get the full picture of what it is that you need to know. Okay. So let's get into your, uh, reading. Now I'm going to start the reading off with your channel. It's basically the same as what I do every, almost every day for everybody on the channel. We're going to be looking at your challenge. We're going to be looking at past, present, and future. I'm going to be clarifying all the cards, and then I'm going to give you some advice. When we're done giving advice to you, we're going to move on. While I'm doing that, I'm going to be pulling Romance Angels and the Island Wellness Oracle. And then I'm going to tell you what's going on. After all of that's done, we're going to be looking at your ancestor messages. Okay. Your important ancestor messages from above, what it is that you need to know in this time when it comes to your love life, your personal life, etc. I'm going to also be talking about the types of energies that are coming into your life. So soulmates, potential soulmates. Um, the, by the way, we don't just have one soulmate. We have multiple soulmates in this life and each soulmate is here to improve and help our uh, selves elevate our soul. Okay. Our soul. That's why they're called soul mates because they mate with you in order to improve your soul. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be doing that. And then I'm going to also be looking at your astrological influences, which again, you need to be conscious of these by you being conscious of these astrological influences. It's going to allow you to completely be aware of what it is that you need to don't know and how you can pick up the pace so that you can get to where you want to be. Okay. So that's going to be the, um, overall essence of the reading. I'm super excited to do it for you. Thank you so much for choosing and trusting me to do your personalized live reading. Okay. So let's get started with your reading. I'm going to clear the energy. Ah, I love the bell. All right. Okay. So let's get started with your reading, Jessica. Tell me about Jessica. What is neat? What do you need to know? Tell me about Jessica. Also, one of the things I was picking up for you, Jessica, this person that you, you you seem, first of all, you seem attached to this person and you block them and you know there's something that this person is trying to show you subconsciously. One of the things that I picked up energetically for you and this person, this is someone from your past life. You know this person. They're very familiar to you. There's something about them when they're around. You, you get this kind of sense, but then you feel blocked inside. So this person is from your past. They're a past life. Um, either you had a past life relationship or this person was your child in a past life. They had some sort of major connection to you. And this is why spirit put them in your life in this life because in your past life, you didn't know how to love or you didn't learn how to love. And in this life, you really want to learn that. Okay. That's why you have the sun and Venus on your ascendant. So you're somebody who's actively constantly looking for love, whether you want to admit that to yourself or not. Okay. Tell me about Jessica. What is, what is going on with Jessica past, present and future? Tell me about Jessica past, present and future. Start right there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay. Your challenge. Okay. In this, t in this moment right now, seven of cups, seven of cups. Okay. And what you don't see coming at the bottom of the deck, you have the eight of swords in reverse. Wow. Wow. So with the eight of swords in reverse, you know what it's telling me, Jessica, it's telling me after this reading, Okay, with me and when you have your appointment with your spiritual advisor that I'm going to recommend you to. 
Uh, you're going to make sure you prepare your questions. That's another thing that I didn't uh, include in when I was explaining that you're going to have an option to choose questions that you want to ask in your personal advisor reading and this that's more personalized okay um so one of the things that you're going to learn okay when this reading is done you're going to free yourself and that that's beautiful i'm already feeling this sense of relief because you're going to free yourself eight of swords in reverse that's what you don't see coming and you're going to recognize what it is that you need to completely heal because there's something within you that that is unhealed hence why the reason the four of swords is in reverse okay someone here is coming back or you could be going back but when this person comes back that's when you're going to completely release them you're still holding on to this person or they're still holding on to you and it is creating some sort of blockage okay i'm going to be honest with you all right so let's pull some romance angels for confirmation and your island wellness I'm just going to pull random cards and these are going to bring forth some sort of confirmation for you Tell me about Jessica, past, present, and future. Tell me more about Jessica in the present, past, present, future. Tell me more about Jessica in the near future. Tell me more. <laughs> okay. Okay. And finally, let's pull some romance angels for you. Tell me more about Jessica, past, present, and future. Soulmates in love. Past, present, and future for Jessica. Important messages. Tell me more. Tell me more about Jessica in the present moment. Tell me more. Tell me more about Jessica in the near future. Okay, bottom of the deck, you have new love in reverse. There's something here, Jessica, about you not wanting new love, okay? It's almost like you like this person, you want them, you wanna be with them. But one of the things that you have to recognize is you need to recognize who you are and who this person is. And that's where astrology comes in and human design comes in because it shows whether or not this person is for you or not, okay? Now, let's get into your reading. I'm going to talk about the cards first and then I'm gonna get in and clarify them for you, okay? So the first card that I have for you is your challenge, which is your overall challenge. And again, there's no time frame on this reading. Um, it's dependent on what you want to know now, what you want to achieve and what you want to accomplish. Once you, once you, excuse me, overcome whatever challenge you you're having that has called you to come to me, that's when you're going to move to the next level. And all tarot and astrology is, is to teach you how to move to the next level. Okay. And that's why you've decided to get a reading. So your biggest challenge right now in this time is the seven of cups. What does this mean? It means, first of all, cups energy, we're talking about emotions. We're talking about, you know, um, 
our feelings, our, you know, the things that drive our emotions. And right now what spirit is saying is your biggest challenge here is you're confused. You're confused about what you want. One minute you want this person, the next minute you don't. One minute you want to unblock them and talk to them, the next minute you don't. So you really need to get to the bottom of whether or not this person is for you. Now, there's a lot of confusion surrounding whether or not this person is your soulmate. It says soul connection, partnership agreement, soul contract. So you're confused. You're like, is this person a soulmate? Are they not a soulmate? Do they want to be with me? Do they not? You may even be going to your friends or you may be going to friends to get advice to help you. You may be coming to me, which is what you're doing to get advice. So your biggest challenge here has a lot to do with getting clear on number one, is this person a soulmate, which we're going to find out, um, during, excuse me, during this reading. Okay. We're going to find out if that's the case. The other thing too here is you need to recognize your, you need to recognize that your challenge here is about you getting clear on something. Okay. And I feel like this is about what type of love you want, what type of soulmate you want to attract. Okay. So this is going to be very, very important. So we're going to talk more about that when we clarify. Now let's talk about the recent past. Now in the recent past, you have the Knight of Swords, you have the Chariot and you have the Emperor. So I feel with this combination of cards, there's something here about you rushing towards this person very quickly, okay? I do feel like you are the Knight of Swords because you do have Gemini qualities. You also have, I think, Saturn in Aquarius. So you are definitely someone who rushes into things. You felt in the past that this relationship was evolving. It says relationship evolves to the next level. Healing the inner child growth, okay? So remember I was telling you that this person... The whole entire reason why they came into your life was to show you how to free yourself, how to evolve as a person, how to move to the next phase. This is something that we've been talking about for quite some time. And this is about inner child growth. So you're learning, or at least this is what you were doing in the past. You were learning how to move to the next level when it came to moving towards love. I do feel like you rushed towards this person in the past, not really knowing where it was going to take you. And that may be why some sort of situation ended up in being a disappointment. Okay. Now in reverse, you have worth waiting for in reverse. So what does this mean? It means that you were not patient. There was a lack of patience. There was this, I want it now. Let's go. Let's do this now. Whoever this person is, they came towards you as the emperor and they were giving you love, unconditional love, self-love, oneness, passion, affection. And you know what? Because you weren't able to reciprocate that or you weren't comfortable enough being open to this person, it led to a separation in the past is what it's telling me. So it looked like you and this person were going to move forward in the past. It looks like, it looked like, excuse me, you were going to get married, honeymoon and everything. But somebody here, and I feel like this was you, you were afraid to take that risk. You felt like you always needed to be strategic with this person and you never really showed this person how you felt. That's why it says hand of cards. So as much as you wanted this, you rushed towards it without thinking. It did lead and is still leading you to some sort of confusion. And because you weren't ready to maybe be open with this person um, completely, that's why it led to some sort of separation here is what it's showing me. We're going to find out more when we clarify. Now, in the present moment, you have the Three of Swords, the Queen of Swords, and the Nine of Wands. So what this is telling me in the present moment is, number one, there's so much pain. You're in so much pain. You still have not healed from this. But I think one of the things that you're learning, because the Three of Swords is at the top of your reading, Jessica, you're learning that you have abundance within yourself. And one of the things that you have to learn is the only way you can truly attract a soulmate, which is what you're longing for in the present moment is by showing that you're an abundant person. Okay. So if you're coming towards people or situations where you're sad, you're upset, you feel like everything's always going wrong. You feel like a victim. Um, you're afraid of expressing to people or situations because you're afraid of getting hurt or being judged. You need to heal that. Okay. And we're going to talk about how you can do that and what you're being called to do, because right now there's so much pain. You're in so much pain and you're super confused. That's your biggest challenge. You're confused about what's going to happen in your life. You're trying to find people to help you. You may be trying to ask friends to help you or um, psychics or, you know, people like me. You're trying to, you know, find that. Okay. You're trying to find somebody who can help you. Now you also have the queen of swords. Okay, with release your ex and the golden mirror. And it says self-absorbed, narcissistic, one-sided relationship, love bombing. So in the present moment, I do feel really strongly that the only way you can truly release this person, and I do feel, 
I'm going to be honest with you, Jessica, I don't feel like this person is 100% for you. I think that they were just showing you how to love and how to get over something here. So there's a need for you maybe to release this person as difficult as it may be um, because this person is trying to show you something within yourself that you need to change, okay? And with the nine of wands here, you have heart-to-heart -heart conversation. So I feel like you're being called in the present moment to honestly discuss your feelings with this person. And some of you, um, some of you, you, Jessica, specifically, uh, girl talk, you could be with friends or you could be trying to find somebody to speak to. Again, friends is really strong here. There's something here about being single and you did mention to me that you are single, okay? So, and it says here confirmation. It says happily single. So you're learning right now not to be in this energy, the nine of wands. Something is coming to an end in the present moment and what's coming to an end is you realizing that it is time for you to express how you feel. As hard as this may be, I'm already getting this energy of you needing to learn how to express to this person that you've blocked, okay? Or to certain people that you're dealing with, but I feel like this is geared towards this person. Now, in the near future, things get very interesting for you, okay? Very interesting for you. In the near future, you have the Nine of Pentacles, the King of Swords, and the Page of Pentacles. There's definitely something here about you having a hard time trusting in the near future, okay? And the reason why you have a hard time trusting is because of whatever happened or is happening in the present moment. In the near future, your real soulmate's gonna come in a twin flame. And I did say that too in previous readings, uh, that a soulmate is coming in. And you have twin flame here. And it says, yin, yang, zen, balance, union, uh, duality, coupling, complement each other. So the problem here is in the near future, you think this person's lying or being deceptive. And it could be because you still haven't healed something. So even though I'm telling you this and telling you what you need to be aware of and what you need to do, if you leave this reading and you don't take the advice or the information that I've given you to make some sort of changes within you, and this is why your daily offering, this is why your daily offering was pick up the pace because it's all about what you do. If you don't make an effort to make some sort of changes, which is what I'm going to recommend you in this reading, then the chances of things moving forward will not happen for you until you do that. Okay. This is very, very critical in order for you to be able to completely move forward. This is why you got pick up the pace. You need to pick up the pace and you need to start learning these things because you're, you're on a specific path here and you're learning. Now in the near future, there's a date. Meeting someone new, dating, getting back out there, plan, set a date. So this person is going to come in or you're going to come in. Okay. King of swords. We're going to find out more about this person and it's going to be up to you if you give it a chance. Okay. It's going to be up to you. Now, if you do not remain optimistic in the near future, which is what you're being called to do, stay optimistic about your love life, positive thinking and faith will bring you romance. And that's what you want. Because again, if I go back to your astrological chart, you have the sun on your ascendant and you have Venus. Do you know what happens when the sun and Venus are conjunct on your ascendant? Your whole entire physical existence in this reality is about finding love and being in that place and showing the world, look, I've accomplished love because you don't have any other problems in, in other areas of your life. It's love that you're focused on. Okay. So in the near future, there is going to be an offer, but it could lead to chasing again. If you don't work on the issues that you're being called to face. And again, we're going to clarify that and talk about it. What you don't see coming was clarified by the cassette and letting go of control issues. So the only way you can release yourself from this, this um, cycle that you're going through, which you will, I'll show you how to do it. Number one, you have to heal yourself. Number two, it says outdated thinking. Okay. This is what it says here. It says outdated thinking. conditioning, replaying events over in your head. There's something here that you keep thinking about over and over again, okay? An outcome. Why did this happen? Why did it go like this? You gotta let go of controlling the issue. Allow this situation to naturally unfold. So in order for you to attract love on a very deep level, which is what your soul wants, okay? You need to stop replaying events from the past. There's a reason why events happened in your life. They happened to show you what you need to change within yourself by you picking up the pace and working on these issues that you've been facing and you know exactly what to do because the signs and synchronicities are coming in, but you ignore them. And the more you ignore them, the more this cassette replays over and over again, you keep going back to the past, okay? So 
this is what I'm seeing so far. Let's get into your reading and let me do some clarification. Let's clarify Jessica's challenge. What's the important message here? Okay, so your biggest challenge, Jessica, is clarified by the Seven of Wands in reverse. The three of swords in reverse and the page of pentacles in order for you to get over this issue this pain okay because you there's something here about you feeling pain pushing this pain away avoiding it you need to be open to some sort of opportunity and this opportunity is about you expressing okay i'm getting a strong expression energy here with the three of swords in reverse so this is about you finding a way to overcome the pain that you're feeling and the best way to do that is number one to get clear on what you want if you're in a place of saying to yourself you know what, I want love, but you know, I don't want to have to deal with the issues that come up. And by the way, if anybody thinks they're going to get into a relationship and there's going to be no issues and everything's going to be smooth, stay single. Do not get involved in a relationship if you're not prepared to deal with the issues that come up to the surface because a soulmate is there to enhance and improve your soul. They will mate with you and they will catch you through the physical appearance, through what they say to you, the fun that you have with them, maybe some sexual experiences that you have, whatever it is, there's a reason why this soulmate is attracting you, okay? And with the Three of Swords in reverse, your biggest challenge is to get over the pain that you've been feeling. The only way you can get over this pain is by giving in the physical, which means you don't have to give a lot, but you need to express, okay? Because the only way for you to get clear on what you want is through expression of the emotions. Hence the reason why you have Aries, moon and Aries, okay? Because it's, you know, squaring your Mercury. So this is about you unblocking. Seven of Wands upright is a blocked energy. It's like, get away from me. I don't want to deal with you, but it's in reverse. So they're showing you what you need to do. I'm just confirming what I told you. So the seven of swords in reverse is you unblocking. Stop being afraid of getting hurt. Stop being afraid of failing. Stop being afraid that things are going to go wrong. Things are going to go wrong whether you block this person or not. You're still going to have to learn what you need to learn. And there's certain people in your life, I don't know if they're friends, but they're telling you what you need to do. And you're either ignoring them or you're not open to what they're saying. And this is why this cycle keeps repeating. And you want this. That's your biggest challenge, that you want a soulmate. You want a real connection. But Jessica, how is a real connection supposed to happen if you're blocking someone? If you're blocking the experiences that you need to go through, okay? So your biggest challenge here is one, getting clear on what you want and following through with it. Even when challenges come up, and again, I'm gonna re repeat myself. If a challenge comes up and you're not ready to face it, it means that you don't really want that which you're asking for, okay? Because I can want something, but it doesn't necessarily mean I'm, I'm gonna get it. I can want someone to come back, but if I'm not ready to be open when that person comes back, they're not gonna come back. So I can tell you, yes, they're coming back, but you're blocking them, okay, number one. And number two, the only way this person's gonna come back, okay, and this is for all of you watching who wants your exes to come back or people from your past to come back, they're not gonna come back until you improve yourself. Because here's the thing, I'm gonna tell you something about love. Love is like an onion. It has many layers. You can peel back the layers and peel back the layers and you're not gonna to get to the center of the root until you completely peel all those layers. And those layers that you're peeling back are tests. Every time you peel an onion, it's one test. One layer is one test. The second layer is the second test. The third layer is a fourth. You know what I mean? So you got to make sure that when you're peeling those layers back in order to get to what you really want, which is a soul connection, you need to prepare and anticipate for the issues that are going to come up and you need to be strategic. How can I work on this? How can I make this better? What do I need to change within myself? Okay. So this is about you getting one very clear on what you want Two expressing your emotions by unblocking this person and expressing in order to heal your heart. Okay. And you can allow or let your friends to help you if you're open to that. That's what your challenge is. Okay. So let's talk about the recent past. Tell me more about the Knight of Swords in the recent past for Jessica.
So the Knight of Swords is clarified by the Ten of Wands, the Nine of Cups, and the Five of Cups. I feel like whoever was rushing into this relationship in the past, whether that was you or your person, I feel like this was you. You may not agree with what I'm about to say, but there was a little bit of self-indulgence on your end, okay? And that needed to come to an end. There's something here about you wanting this relationship to happen very quickly. I do feel in the past for you, again, either you or your person, take it as it resonates. Somebody here wasn't happy. There's something that happened. A challenge came up in the past. And as soon as a challenge came up in the past, either you or your person thought, oh, I'm just going to find someone new. I'm just going to go out because you didn't want to wait. Someone here did not want to wait. Worth the wait in the recent past in reverse. Somebody here didn't want to wait. They were all focused on themselves and what they needed at the time. Because their life became very difficult. I feel like this was you. Your life started to become difficult. You wanted love. You wanted that support. And when this person couldn't give you what you wanted because you weren't willing to wait, some sort of third party happened here or somebody started to become busy and it didn't really go the way that you wanted it to. Because here's the thing. In the past, you wanted to move forward. You believe that you were going to get married to this person or have a, some sort of honeymoon or go on a trip. There's something here about going on a trip in the past, wanting to, wanting to move forward. Tell me more about the chariot in the recent past. Something here in the past led to a separation and we're going to find out why. Tell me more about the chariot for Jessica. So the chariot is clarified by the king of wands, the judgment, and the six of cups. So there's definitely something here about your past that happened in the past. So if you had trauma, if you had some sort of um, pain, okay, in the past, some sort of abandonment issues, that may have been something here that happened in the past that got you to realize something about needing to change. So there was a fear here in the past of taking a risk. Um, there's something here about keeping your options open, not showing how you truly felt to this person. And you know what happened because you were holding back. Number one, you were rushing towards something without really expressing how you felt. There's something here about, um, something that happened in your past. And because of that situation that happened in your past, it became very difficult for you to express how you love. Um, there's something here about uh, a father or a mother or a family member, not, either suppressing their emotions or not giving you the love. And then now that it's time in the recent past to give love, it's been blocked. There's been a blocked energy here of being able to move forward. And there's something from your past, Jessica, that happened in the past that triggered you from this happening. Okay. Now your person in the recent past separated from you or you separated from them, even though they had a lot of love for you and they were going to bring stability to you, but it didn't happen. So what happened with you and this person in the past? Why did it lead to a separation? And why is the emperor here in the recent past? One of the things I want to mention is this person that you've been dealing with. They have um, Jupiter in your 12th house, okay, through Sinistry. So what does this mean? It means in the composite chart, this person is a part of your past life. I'm getting a strong past life energy. And that's why you were very drawn to this person. This is why the Six of Cups is here because this often talks about memories from your past and it's in the past, which is confirming to me that this person was a um, lover in the past or someone who was very close to you in the past. This person tried to work things out with you. They tried to give you love. They tried to work things out with you in the past, but because they weren't getting through to you, they left and they disconnected. And when this person disconnected from you, it hurts you so much. In fact, it is still hurting you till this day. Every day it hurts you. Every day. You wake up thinking about it. You go to bed thinking about it. When you're working, you think about it. And it's been bothering you so much that you can't even live your life. So this person left in the past, even though they tried to work things out on numerous occasions with you and then you just block them, okay? So this is what I'm seeing happen in the past. Now, in the present moment, there's something here about you still being hurt. That's why you came to me. I am the queen of hearts, by the way. I'm the queen of cups. I'm super, super, super all about hearts. I even have a birthmark here. That's a heart. I may show you one day. You'll see, maybe one day I'll, I'll open myself up a little bit more and show you all what, what I'm really all about. I'm the queen of, of love. And all you gotta do is come to me and I will show you what the problem is. And that's what I'm doing now. You're in pain. Jessica, I cannot tell you how much in pain you are. You're so in pain. You wanna be loved. You want that love. You want this. This is what you want. Yes, this is your soulmate. In the present moment, there is someone I don't know if you've met them already. We're going to find out when we clarify. 
your soulmate is going to come to you when you clear this. The only way you can clear this is by expression. This is why, again, your moon is in Aries and your Mercury, which is the form of communication, is in Cancer, which is creating a 90 degree angle. Anytime you see a 90 degree angle in astrology, it means tension. It And, and tension isn't a bad thing. Tension is not a bad thing. You know, tension is a good thing. You know, you want to know why? Because tension is meant to help you grow and see what it is that you need to work through. There's something you need to work through when it comes to pain. Okay, we're going to clarify and find out about that first. Tell me more about the Three of Swords and what's the important message for Jessica. You have the Two of Wands, the King of Cups, and the Three of Wands. You need to express. You know what the King of Cups does in order to move forward? The three of wands is about moving forward. The two of wands is about asking yourself, where am I in this point in my life? Where am I now and where do I want to be? Why do you think it says pick up the pace? Because right now you want to move forward. You're tired of being stagnant. You're tired of being hurt. You're tired of being stagnant. You're tired of not having love. You're tired of trying to make sense of the situation. And the only way you can truly make sense of the situation and move forward is by expressing. That's the message for you in the present moment. King of Cups and the Three of Wands. The Three of Wands is about someone who just wants to travel, okay? You could be traveling even in the present moment. I think I heard um, that you're traveling in the present moment. And you, you're trying to find your love. You're traveling. You're like, oh, well, maybe I'll find somebody, you know? But I'm going to tell you something, Jessica. You don't have to find this person, they're going to find you. You don't have to do nothing. The only thing you have to do is express. That's your biggest challenge, how you feel, what you want. Don't think that you're dumb if you do that. Don't think, oh, well, I don't want to look stupid. I don't want to look dumb. I don't want them to make fun. No, that's what you, that's your challenge. The only way you can move forward is by making a decision. You can either move backwards or move forward. But part of you moving forward and receiving this abundance and receiving this soulmate that you are looking for, this is what you want, right? Abundance and a soulmate. You need to heal your heart by expressing. You need to heal your heart by expressing. There's your heart. There's the King of Cups and there's the Three of Wands. That's the only way you're going to be able to move forward. You've got to unblock and express. Because when the real soulmate comes in and it's time for you to express and you don't do that, it means you didn't learn the lesson. And there's always lessons. Okay, anybody who comes to the channel and thinks, oh, I'm going to go see Monica Louvre today and, you know, everything's going to be peachy, creamy. The sky is going to be baby blue. There's going to be no clouds. The sun is going to be bright and everything's going to be. But nope, you're going to have cloudy days. You're going to have rainy days. You're going to have snowy days. You're going to have really, really hot, intense days. There's going to be those things that come up. So that leads me to, in the present moment, the Nine of Wands. And the Nine of Wands is someone who's afraid. They're afraid of getting hurt. They're afraid of the past repeating and the, repeating again. They're afraid of taking action. They're constantly in this, don't hurt me. And it's not that you say this to someone. It's that your energy in the present moment because you're still hurt how do you expect to attract love, even if it's a new person, when you're in that energy? So what you're being called to do, Jessica, in the present moment is to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Honestly discuss your feelings with each other. Unblock this person and have a conversation. Why are you afraid to do that? Tell me more about the Nine of Wands for Jessica in the present moment. The only way for you to completely move towards a real commitment is by really recognizing what is it that you're still holding on to. There's something that you're holding on to, Jessica, that you're afraid to express. And the only way for you to completely move towards a commitment, happiness, ending this cycle that's been very difficult is by expressing what you want. There's something here about you wanting a commitment. And if you wanted a commitment and this person wasn't able to give you that, that could also 
be a signal that this person isn't for you, okay? That may that may or may have not been happening or is happening, take it as it resonates, but you need to have a heart to heart conversation and there's a need for you to look at the situation from a different perspective. That's what you're being called to do and that's why you have girl talk. It's not a coincidence, right? That you have talk here twice. You got girl talk here and then you have conversation, which is another form of talking. And it says time with friends, moving on, happily single, living in the moment, having fun. You're learning to let go. That's your biggest issue. And that's why things are very confusing for you because you're being called to release this person. And one of the things that I've mentioned numerous times on this channel is, especially for the air signs, Libras especially. For you, Jessica, this is about you releasing this person correctly. Even if you decide not to be with them, there's something here about unblocking this person and saying, look, this is how I feel. This is how I really, really, really feel. Okay, so there's something here about you expressing, unblocking and expressing. It could be expressing through a letter, an email, a phone call. And you could say whatever it is that you need to say, and that's going to be your biggest challenge because what this person is doing is they're being the golden mirror. One of the things that you may not know when I looked at this person's chart and I looked at your chart, you both are very similar. This person is actually a rising Gemini and you're a rising Cancer. So this person just mirrors you and shows you what you need to change. By you communicating with this person, Queen of Swords, and expressing how you feel, you're going to finally realize that it's time to release them. As difficult as that may seem, and you may say to yourself, no, 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 I don't want to release them. I want to be with them, but they're not for you. And I've said that to you already. It's a self-absorbed, narcissistic, one-sided relationship and love bombing. If you end up staying with this person, that's all... That's all the things that are going to happen between you and them. So tell me more about the queen of swords. Why you're being called right now to release this person correctly by having a conversation, which is ultimately going to allow you to move forward and find your soulmate. That's what it's saying here. The cards don't lie. The cards are just simply confirmation. After I speak, they're just confirmation to confirm my study and what I see in your charts. In order for this situation to change and for you to come out of bondage, because the devil represents bondage, being being linked to something or someone that's not good for you, you need to have this conversation. And again, I did say that this person's a soulmate, but they're not your ultimate soulmate. They're just your soulmate to help you find the soulmate that you need to find. Now, for some people, they may say, no, 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 that's a karmic. Sure. To some extent, it may be a karmic for you, but I feel like this person who you're inquiring about came towards you as a disguised soulmate. And a lot of people don't talk about that online, on YouTube, on TikTok. They don't talk about it on Twitter. Okay. They don't talk about uh, soulmates that are disguised. And there are soulmates that come disguised. At first you meet them, you think, oh, this is the one, this is the person I'm going to be with. But then a challenge comes up. And then when this challenge comes up, you say to yourself, oh, I, this isn't my soulmate. Why do I have to go through this with this person? It's because there's something within you you need to change. So there is a conversation that if you're open to having in the present moment, it's going to allow you to get clear on what it is that you want. You're going to realize that all this person wanted to do was show you how to love and you were closed off to it because you were afraid of being rejected or something here didn't move as quick as you wanted it to. And that's why you have the golden mirror. It's a self-absorbed, narcissistic, one-sided relationship and love bombing. So it's not for you, but it's for you to learn about what needs to change in order for you to move towards your abundance. Okay. So that's what I'm seeing in the present moment. Now, let's talk about the near future. Now, in the near future, like I said, there's a very big change coming in for you because um, look at this, Seven of Cups in reverse. It's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence, Jessica, look. Seven of Swords in reverse. And what's your challenge? So you're getting it now. You're getting it. You're clearly understanding, understanding, and overstanding what you need to do. This is where you're at right now. You're in confusion. But as you're going through this reading with me, you are becoming unconfused. Seven of Cups in reverse. And so it is, okay? So in the near future, you're gonna be single. There's no relationship yet. You're gonna be single, you're gonna be in your abundance, you know, maybe shopping, having a good time, eating out, going around, whatever, doing your thing. You're gonna meet someone. You're gonna go on a date. You need to stay optimistic. 
if you meet somebody that you really like and you start doubting, which is what you do all the time, you start saying, well, what if, what if this goes wrong? What if that goes wrong? What if they cheat? What if they lie? What if they da, 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 da? And when you start doing that, it starts to manifest because one of the things you don't realize is how powerful you are. Your life right now, your mission, your soul mission with the sun and Venus on your ascendant is to find love. That's your whole entire mission. Now, I do see some sort of deception showing up here. I don't know why it's showing up. We're going to see. So let's clarify. Tell me more about this twin flame that's coming in for Jessica in the near future. By the way, you're going to meet this person on your own. You're going to be completely on your own, doing your own thing. And boom, you just bump into this person. That's what I'm getting. Tell me more about the nine of pentacles for Jessica in the near future. You have the Knight of Wands, the Seven of Cups, and the Ace of Cups. Yes. So you see new love. This person that you're blocking, they're not for you. They're just going to teach you how to be open to love. Once you forgive this person and you release them correctly by unblocking them and telling them how you feel, then you're going to release them. Then in the future, there's a new love coming in. But here's your problem, okay? And this is going to be so critical for you. So critical for you you got to get clear on what you want. You cannot walk around saying, I want love, I want love, but you don't know how this person looks. You don't know what type of love this person's going to bring you. Who is this person? How are you envisioning this person? If you're not clear, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Very important you're listening, okay? Stop what you're doing, listen. If you want love in the near future and it looks like it's coming in and you're not clear 100% on what it is that you want, there will be games. This is why I'm going to go back to your daily offering. Pick up the pace. Pick up the pace. Express what you want. If you don't express what you want, there's going to be confusion in the near future. So you see what you're, what, what the pro I'm going to be honest with you. You see what the problem is, right? Mercury square the moon. That's your biggest issue astrologically in your chart that I saw. So if you don't express what you want and you're not clear without, the thing is, is every time you want something and you try to express it, you have this worry. Well, what if this goes wrong? What if that goes, stop that. The only reason why deception happens in the near future and the best way to avoid it is by you getting clear on what you want. And if you say something and this person's like, oh, no, I don't want that. They're, they're not for you. That's it. If you say to this person, I want to get married. I want children. I want this. I want that. You don't have to say it to this person the first date or the second date. But as you start to get to know this person, you need to be open to what it is that you want. And you need to get clear. Because if this person doesn't want what you want, then they're not for you. And that's what leads to some sort of deception in the near future. So my biggest message for you in the near future is learn the lesson. The lesson here is to express your feelings. Every time you feel like you need to say something, there's only two types of moon, Aries. You either blow up and you don't know how to control your emotions or you suppress. And I think you're the type of uh, moon in Aries that suppress, you suppress a lot. So in the near future, you need to make sure you get very clear, King of Swords, when you date this person. King of Swords and dates, you see? And it says meeting someone new, dating, getting back out there, plan, set a date. And look, new love, Ace of Cups is here. So you see this person that you have blocked, the more you block this person, the more you block your love. And this person is not the person you're supposed to be with, this person that you blocked. There's a reason why you subconsciously block them. It's because you don't want to face the fact that you want to express how you feel. But once you truly express, I'm telling you, once you call them, text message, uh, communicate with them. And it's not because you want to get back with them. It's to clear the energy. If the energy is not clear, then all you're doing is creating more suppression. And that suppression is ultimately leading for leading to you being blocked from having the love that you want. That's why you need to pick up the pace. Okay. Cards don't lie. All right. So there's a date. Tell me more about this date for Jessica in the near future. I want to know about this date 
And it says, look what it says. Look, it says, give your relationship a chance. Work on your partnership. Stop running away from problems. When the problems come up, listen, and this is for everybody, okay? Jessica, by the way, is helping everybody by doing this reading because there's something in this reading, not only for Jessica, but for the collective as well too, okay? So in the near future, the best way for you to give your relationship a chance is by being open when issues come up. You need to be thankful. Every time issues come up in your relationship, you should say, oh, thank the, the universe. Thank the universe for this issue to come up. Why? Because you're learning. Anytime a challenge comes up in your life, you should be very thankful because that is showing you something within you that you have to change so you can move to the next level. And that's what you want to do in the present moment. You want to move forward. Tell me about this date for Jessica. Tell me about this date for Jessica in the near future. Ooh, okay, so the, the date card here is the um, Chariot, the Lovers, and the Seven of Swords. The same thing that happened in the past is going to happen again, okay? This time in the near future, hopefully you're prepared based on what I've told you and taught you in the readings. The Seven of Swords is showing up here in the near future because somebody here isn't being honest, okay? And this could be you or your person. I feel to some extent, Jessica, this is you, the Seven of Swords, because you do have a very strong air energy in your chart, okay? There's something here about you being open to love and expressing your emotions. Don't be in this energy of, well, what if this person takes from me? What if they steal from me? What if they lie to me? Is that what you want? If you have trust issues, you need to let this person know that. And don't feel silly when you do. If you date this person, you say, look, I've had, you know, I have trust issues. I'm still getting over trauma. You know how you know if this person's for you? They're gonna say, that's okay, we can work on that together. That's the, re that's the truth. And in the near future, the less you express, the less you're open about what you want, because this is what you want. You want a soulmate, you wanna move forward. The less you're open about that, the more the chasing happens, okay? The codependence, the relationship, fear of abandonment, you see? So you need to remain optimistic about any opportunities. Think positively. Faith will bring you romance. My recommendation for you, okay, this is my recommendation before I give you the advice, because I need to tell you this, you need to start doing affirmations in the morning, okay? So in the morning, you got to get up and you got to say, I deserve love. I deserve love. Love is coming to me. Love is easy for me to have. I'm meant to meet my soulmates. I, and you can choose one of those and repeat it 30 times. So as soon as you wake up out of your bed, you got to say that. I deserve love. Say it 30 times. Or you can say, um, love is coming to me. Love is easy. Love flows to me. You can say love just flows to me. My soulmate is coming. My soul say that my soulmate is coming 30 times when you wake up in the morning. Okay. And you need to stay optimistic. Otherwise this can turn into, um, a different path that you don't want it to go into. So if you're not clear and you're allowing negative thoughts to consume you, that may create some sort of deception, lies, third party in the near future, okay? So these are things that you need to be prepared for. Tell me more about this offer in the near future for Jessica. You have the five of wands, the queen of wands, and the emperor. You see, right when this stable relationship's coming in, you start to push it away and you start to create conflict, okay? So here's the thing. I'm gonna be honest with you, Jessica. You, you know I keep it real. The only way you can attract love, this deep love that you want, you need to remain optimistic. You need to be open to it. When a problem arises, don't just block this person and run away because you're not facing what you need to face. You need to release yourself from this energy that's been holding you back. And you know exactly what to do, okay? You need to stop replaying events from the past over and over again. Release them. They're outdated. Let go of controlling the situation. Every time you block this person, whether it's this person or someone new, you're just creating more blockages for yourself and you're slowing things down. This is why your daily offering was pick up the pace. You need to find the energy within yourself to clear these blockages by being open, communicating. Your emotions and how you feel 
may be hard to express, but the more you are able to express them from a deep place, the person who's for you is just going to understand, understand, and overstand. It's not something you have to force. And that's why it's saying what you don't see coming is you're going to have to allow the situation to unfold naturally. Look, this is what it's saying. How do you think soulmates end up being together by, by forcing it? No. You need to allow the situation to unfold the way it needs to, okay? So that's what I'm seeing for you. Let's get some advice and then we're going to get into your bonus, okay? We're going to get into your important messages and what you need to know. Now, for those of you who are still watching and seeing how I do personalized readings, I do not clarify the advice. Once I give you advice, it's a download. I send give you the advice. You can take the advice or you don't have to, okay? But I don't clarify advice. Tell me about Jessica. What is the important piece of advice that Jessica needs to know at this time? Oop. Okay. Your biggest piece of advice here is to let something go. I don't know what it is. I feel like it could be this person that you're still attached to. There's a big lesson here that you need to learn and it is it is a part of your destiny and as difficult as it may be for you to let the situation, excuse me, as difficult as it may be, Jessica, for you to let go of the situation, you need to let go of something that you're holding on to because it's not a part of your destiny. There's something bigger and better that's coming in for you, okay? And the best times to manifest the soulmate is going to be in the winter, the beginning of winter, fall, spring, or summer, okay? The four uh fixed signs okay so the summertime is perfect for you now but the reason why you're not able to attract love or find love is because you're still holding on to something and it is this person in the past that you blocked this person you're being called right now to release them as difficult as it may be by you releasing this person you are showing the universe that you've learned what you needed to learn from this person the only reason why jessica this person came into your life and you blocked them was because you're afraid of love you're afraid of expressing love. You're afraid of being rejected. You're afraid of being hurt. You're afraid that people aren't going to understand who you are. But one of the things that you need to recognize is you're a unique person. Like I'm a unique person. Like everybody else watching, the thousands of people that are watching this, we're all unique. Our, our handprint even shows us how unique we are. So what you need to recognize is that just because you let something go doesn't mean that you're never going to have it again. When a soulmate leaves our lives or a soulmate comes in, it doesn't just end with that person. We have multiple soulmates and it's not about the physical body. It's about what you're learning from that person in order to find love. Sometimes we go through hundreds of people before we find our soulmate. So spirit is saying in order for you to truly take advantage of your destiny by finding the soulmate that you want, by being happy in love, you need to release something that you've been holding on to. And I feel like it's this person that you blocked. My biggest piece of advice for you is to write a letter to this person about how you feel. It's not dumb. It's not silly. You're doing it because you're clearing the energy. Once you clear the energy with this person and you say, look, I really wanted to marry you. I thought you were the one, but you know what? You taught me how to love. You taught me how to be open. You taught me how to express the way I feel. That is so beautiful when you do that. And again, it may be difficult for you to release this person and walk away, but what are you holding on to? Are you truly holding on to what it is that you want? Or are you just holding on to it because it's comfortable? Spirit is saying, I don't want you to lose out on what's truly for you. Even though it may seem like there's nobody else in the world other than this person that you blocked, this person is just the vessel of love. That's why their incarnated cross is the vessel of love. And there's a reason why this person mirrors you all the time. And every time they do something that you don't like, you block them because you don't want to face something within yourself. So your biggest piece of advice here is to let this person go correctly by writing a letter, emailing, or phone calling. Once you release this person, things are going to change. And that's when the Wheel of Fortune is going to come in and do their piece. Now, the next, you can do it now because it's summertime, which is Leo season. You have only until the 22nd to do it. After the 22nd, you're going to have to wait until late October, early November. If you don't do it in late October, or early November, then you're going to have to wait until winter time. So the only time to clear this, this energy is during the fixed points in the sky, summer, fall, winter, spring. If you do it at any other time, it won't work. 
Okay, so you need to pick up the pace. This is why it says pick up the pace. Okay, so that's what I'm seeing energetically for you. Now, I'm going to clear the cards and we're going to move into the second portion of your reading. Okay, now let's clear the cards. Beautiful reading, lots of information. I recommend coming back and re-watching the reading. That's why I do them live. So you can come back at any time and re-watch the reading over and over again until you get the message, all right? Okay. Writing the letter, Jessica, is gonna be very important to you. If you don't do it, you're gonna just continue creating blockages, okay? It's very crucial that you do this. Okay. Now, if you want to get a drink or get a snack, now is the time to do it until I get into the next portion of the reading, okay? And just keep in mind, even though this is a personalized live reading, there's still always messages. There's a reason why you're watching and there's a reason why you're here, okay? There's always... Um, a reason for everything there is no coincidences okay all right all right okay great now that we got the energy reading done we're going to move on to your ancestor messages. So I'm going to do ancestor messages first. Then I'm going to do the people who are coming in, your soulmates who are coming in and what you need to do to, to make sure you prepare for them to come in. And then I'm going to talk about the astrology, okay? All right. Let's talk about ancestor messages. We're going to be using the Angel of Wisdom Tarot deck. Okay, and this is your ancestor messages. And then we're going to talk about your soulmates, okay? All right, tell me about Jessica's ancestors. What are the important messages from ancestors of Jessica? Tell me about Jessica and the important messages from ancestors. Important message, ancestor messages for Jessica. Important messages from Jessica's ancestors. Important messages from Jessica's ancestors. Wow. Okay, so the first thing I want to uh, mention to you, Jessica, is your ancestors are very powerful. Okay, I don't know. Um, this may be a grandfather. Okay, there's something here about a grandfather or a male dominant figure. It could be your father or your grandfather. You, either these people have some sort of major connection to you. Okay, so if you have a great grandfather or a grandfather who passed on, they're very much supporting you. Okay, they're very much, this um, grandfather had either long hair or he had like, um, 
kind of like uh, like very wise and getting a wise energy. So what your ancestors are saying, they see that you want to be happy. Okay, the bottom of the deck, we have the Ten of Cups. So this is their overall message to you. And it says a happy marriage, happy, happily ever after emotional contentment, a loving relationship with your children, raising children wisely, successfully, people you can trust. There's something here about your ancestors saying you have trust issues, like you have trust issues when it comes to life, love, people being open to them. You're always questioning people or questioning situations. And they're saying that they know what you want. You want this love. You want to be loved. You want happiness and you're going to get it. You're going to get it. You're going to get it. Okay. But you also need to be open with your emotions. Okay. So the first ancestor here is, could have been a water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. I'm getting an Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. Tell me more. What are the important messages from Jessica's ancestors? Okay, you have build strength in reverse. So you need to build some sort of strength within yourself. Okay, this is about you holding yourself back. Your ancestors are saying it's time to build strength. It's time to work on yourself. Now, the first ancestor here is the king of water. And it says, this is the message from your ancestor. Okay, very important. It says trustworthy, honorable, devoted, cautious, someone you can completely trust, a situation that is safe, a solid romantic relationship, hidden but well-informed emotions or well-intentioned, well-intentioned emotions, a charitable benefactor, seeing a counselor. So your ancestor is saying, look, instead of just being in this place of zoning out, there's something here about you zoning out, like you like to watch movies or you constantly just zone out and you pretend like there's no problems. This person is saying in order for you to get to this place of love, which is what you want, you need to come towards people in a trustworthy manner. You need to be honest. You need to be honorable, cautious, but still at the same time, be open to trusting. Um, this person is saying that there's a safe situation that's coming into your life, but you have to trust it. And in order to build this happiness that you're looking for, you need to also be open to trials and tribulations and not ignore them. That's why the movie card is here because what they're saying is you always ignore. There's something here about you ignoring something and instead of just facing it, um, it creates more blockages for you. Okay. So this, this ancestor, they really love you. They're very emotional, whoever this ancestor is. But this is someone, this person, what they're saying to me is they've conquered. Whatever you're conquering now, they've conquered it. So this person could have had a lot of emotions. They could have been someone who had a very successful family or they could have had a lot of children. Uh, but they're trying to show you what you need to do. You need to be open. But at the same time, it's okay to be a little bit cautious. You have the tower, the four of swords and the queen of swords. This is you. You are the queen of swords and they're directly speaking to you and saying, look, when something bad happens in your life, take the time out to, to heal, take the time out to rest. Okay. There's something here about bad things happening in your life. And then you keep going. It's like you keep going. And one of the things that I noticed in your human design is you're a sacral, you're a generator. So it means you're here to create. But at the same time, you also have to recognize when you need balance, okay? When you need to rest. So this person, this ancestor saying, look, you deserve love. Love is gonna come in, but you can't ignore it. And the more you ignore by blocking people, by not confronting issues, by not expressing how you feel because you think you're gonna look bad, silly, or dumb, the more you miss opportunities. And all that does, Jessica, it leads you to have to rebuild your life over and over again. And it gets tiring, right? Because you're somebody who, who builds, 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 builds. And then when something crumbles, it's like, you're like, oh, now I have to rebuild everything again. So this ancestor is saying, do not ignore the signs of love. When love shows up, you need to reciprocate. And that's what you're learning. That's why in your human design, you have the will center, which is, um, the light is not there on the triangle and the solar plexus is about our emotions. So when those two areas are shut down, there's going to be people who come into your life and fill those areas for you. And then you need to act accordingly. And that's what this ancestor is saying. Do not ignore love when it's time to heal, heal when it's time to rebuild, rebuild and be honest with yourself, but don't be rigid. There's something here about you constantly hiding your emotions and that's not who you really are. Okay. And that's what this person is trying to say. Grandfather. It's a grandfather, a great grandfather. He had long hair like down to here and or he had some sort of something about his hair that was very like out there. He was known by something about his hair. OK, 
Okay, very, very, this this um, ancestor is someone who traveled by boat. He could have been somebody who liked to travel by boat and sea. He could have also been a fisherman as well, is what I'm getting, okay? Now, the second ancestor is a father figure or another great-grandfather. He was very inspirational. This um, grandfather is somebody who is all about talking about your moon again, your moon in Aries. Now we have hydrate, which is the moon energy, and we have the king of um, fire, which is the Aries energy. So they have a message here about, again, your emotions. There's something here about your emotions. And the message here from this ancestor, there's something here about a royal bloodline. You could be, you could have like royal ancestors or there's something here about royalty, what I'm getting, okay? So it says motivational, insp inspiring, theatrical, ambitious, taking a leadership role, stepping into the spotlight, public speaking. You could be somebody who is also um, prominent in that regard. And you also have keep your eye on the big picture, communicate your vision. Don't be sensitive to criticism. Okay. So remember I was saying to you, when issues come up, you, what you're learning right now, your biggest lesson is when I feel a certain way, I need to express it. Okay, so let's say you don't like the way your partner's doing something or you don't like the way things are going. Do you or are you capable of pulling that person aside and saying, hey, let's talk about this. I want to talk about how I feel. Or do you run away from your feelings? One of the things that this ancestor is telling me to tell you is the best way to increase your ability to express your emotions is by consuming water or being around water, okay? Because for you, your, your, your moon is in a fire sign, so... First of all, like I said, the moon is not comfortable there. So your ancestor is saying you need to hydrate. You need to spend more time in water. You need to meditate in water to get in touch with your emotions. Don't be sensitive to criticism. Communicate your vision. The whole reading for you, and it's confirmation from your ancestor, is to communicate, okay? It says communicate your vision. Don't be sensitive to criticism, okay? Okay. Take that leadership role. You're somebody who's motivational, inspiring, theatrical, and ambitious. And you do very well either in your career or you do something well in finances. But when it comes to love, there's issues. You need to keep your eye on the bigger picture. Tell me more about the important message from this ancestor. Okay, so you have the six of pentacles, the four, the five of pentacles and the knight of pentacles. In order for you to really get to this place of balance within your relationships, because there's something here about you giving a lot to relationships. That's what they're saying to me, that you, you over give in your relationships, but sometimes you don't get enough back or somebody overgives to you and you don't give enough back. And this can be emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, etc. In order for you to bring balance to your relationships, when issues come up, you can't just run away from them. Before you want to just block and run away, you need to think about it. You need to move very carefully and slowly. And this is about communicating. You need to flow like water when it comes to your emotions. Not when you feel something, don't sit in question and be like, well, why do I feel like this? This isn't normal. No, that's your feelings. The thing in life is this. There's two types of people. Okay. Okay. There is the person who transmutes the energy, which means giving. Okay, there's a person who gives and there's a person who receives. We're not always going to be givers and we're not always going to be receivers. We're going to find ourselves in different situations where we're going to be either the giver or the receiver or vice versa. Whenever you're in this situation and you don't like the way things are going, you need to step back. And you need to really get into this place of meditating, like taking a bath, going in water, releasing your emotions, thinking about how can I change this? Asking your ancestors, how can I change this? Show me a sign. Because I think you want things to change. I think you want things to get better. That's what they're saying. But you got to be careful because when somebody criticizes you or says something to you, you're quick to block them or run away. And there's something within that situation that you need to learn. Okay. And this is why you have the five of pentacles with the knight of pentacles. Don't just run away from something that becomes difficult. Take your time because there could be something valuable here that you need to learn within your relationship. Relationships, okay, so hydrating is going to be very important. I'll hydrate myself right now. <laughs> hydrate yourself, keep yourself hydrated. Don't run away from your problems and communicate your vision. If you have a vision of wanting happiness, then you shouldn't be afraid to express that to somebody who you believe is the one. 
And don't be afraid of rejection. That's what this ancestor is saying to you, okay? Now, the final message from your ancestor is the magician. So you could have had somebody in your family who passed on who was the magician okay they were a magician maybe they did magic it says magic is alive in your life what you need to be successful will manifest if you believe it you can do it so this ancestor is saying that your negative thoughts your negative emotions uh you need to stop doing that you need to start waking up in the morning and doing the affirmation okay 30 times 30 times in the morning Love is coming to me, 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 love is coming to me 30 times. You can say any affirmation that you want, it should be related to what you want. So if you want love, then you need to reaffirm yourself something positive once you get out of the subconscious state of being in a sleep, okay? So you have sweet treat here. This per this ancestor liked to eat sweets or they like candies or they maybe when you were growing up, somebody like candies. I don't know if this is a grandmother or an uncle or an aunt or a grandfather. I don't feel like this is a grandfather. I feel like this is more of like an uncle or an aunt or it could be a grandmother, but they like sweets. Okay. And that's confirmation of who this person is. Tell me more about the, the magician card. What is the important message from this ancestor for Jessica? You have the Eight of Cups, the Three of Wands, and the Ten of Pentacles. This this uh, ancestor is saying that you need to walk away from something here that doesn't emotionally satisfy you. And it could be this person that you have blocked. You're still emotionally attached to them is what they're saying. But this ancestor is saying that you need to find a way to detach from this situation, any situation. So if there's a situation in your life that you're attached to and it's not emotionally healthy for you, you need to find a way to release yourself from it. Because once you release yourself from this situation, you have the three of wands here. I did see the three of wands at the top of your reading uh, for the present energy. So this ancestor is saying in order for you to move forward, you need to accept something here that you need to release. And that's what's going to lead you to the happiness that you're looking for. You're looking to create a family, have children. Even if it, even if you don't want to have children, you want love. And the only way love is going to happen for you is, is if you release yourself from something here that's emotionally not satisfying you. You need to accept how you feel and then express them. That's your biggest issue. You, you don't express how you feel. You're constantly suppressing all the time. You're constantly overanalyzing outcomes when you really should just be expressing. And as easy as it is for me to say, it may be difficult for you to do, but that's what this ancestor is saying because what they're saying is you're just blocking your ability to create what you want, magician. Okay, so this is what I'm seeing in terms of what your uh, ancestors are saying. Now, we're gonna move on to, we're gonna move on to uh, your soulmates. Okay, who are these soulmates that are coming in? We're going to clarify them. I'm going to tell you exactly who these soulmates are, when they're coming in, and what you need to do to prepare when they come, okay? So let's get into it. Tell me about Jessica's soulmates, these soulmates that are coming in. We're going to look at three potential soulmates that are coming into your life. They can come at any time. I'm going to tell you when they're coming in. Um, what you need to know and how you need to approach the situation in order to be successful in love. Tell me about Jessica's soulmates. Who are these soulmates that are coming in for Jessica? Tell me about Jessica's soulmates. Give me three cards. Who are these soulmates that are coming in? Okay, I don't do any reversals with the soulmate card, so they're all going to be upright, okay? Yeah. Okay. Bottom of the deck, you have the Ten of Raphael. It's not a coincidence you keep getting Ten of Cups all the time, okay? So for the soulmate, you have the Ten of Raphael. And the overall message for you is love and blessings fill your life. Harmonious relationships with family members happily ever after. You're going to find your soulmates. This is what your mission is, okay? Venus and Sun conjunct your ascendant. 
All right. So the first cards, first soulmate you have is Epiphany, number nine. This is the first soulmate that you met, the one who you blocked. The number nine represents an end of a cycle. It means that you've completed something. You're in the po point of realizing a higher perspective of the situation. It says joy through spiritual growth. Yeah, this is the person that you have blocked. This person only came into your life, Jessica, like I said, is to spiritually enhance you. That's why they're called the vessel of love. And that's why you have your solar plexus open and you have your heart chakra open as well too in your chart. Okay. So this person is joy through spiritual growth, be a light to others, answers that come through meditation. So this person came into your life, this soulmate, the one that you have blocked, came in to show you how to get out of this place of, of, of um, being blocked um, emotionally. And they also may be somebody who's very spiritual or somebody who's all about spirit, spiritual energy. Now, you did tell me that this person is a Pisces, okay? And I did look at their chart. Uh, they have a stellium, I think, in Pisces. So they're very Piscarian. You also have Pisces in your chart as well, too, in your Vedic, because I did um, do some more research on you as well, too. So this person is simply just in your life to get you out of this place of darkness, uh, tell me more about this soulmate that, that is either in Jessica's life or came into Jessica. I believe this is a past um, soulmate. You have the star, the four of cups, and the five of wands. You and this person constantly had arguments and, and, and issues. The reason why this conflict happened was because you would reject this person or they would reject you. And it almost led to a breakup or did lead to a breakup and there was a constant conflict that's why you block them or disconnected from them you have the star so the whole entire point of this person coming into your life is for you to become the star to become confident to become aware of what it is that you want I feel like you and this person would talk about the future and then it would lead to arguments and conflict. And that is a confirmation that this person was not for you. They were only meant to show you some sort of level of spiritual growth. And I mentioned that to you. Again, I don't want to call this person a karmic, but I think that they were a soulmate in disguise. And I haven't really talked about soulmates in disguise, but I can talk about that maybe on the other channel as well too, okay? So this person was someone who came into your life to create some sort of epiphany, okay? That was one soulmate, which I again feel was the person that you blocked. Now the next soulmate is the seven of Ariel, okay? And it, and it says, you have invested wisely. Have patience and wait for the harvest. Review your progress and make plans for the next endeavor. So in the present moment, there is a very strong possibility you're gonna meet someone who is the one. But you have to be ready. If you're not ready and you don't have patience and you're rushing like you did in the past, it's going to lead to a downfall. Tell me more about this soulmate. Tell me more about this soulmate. What does Jessica need to know in the present moment? You have the devil, the tower, and the four of swords. This soulmate who's coming in, okay, I feel like this person's coming in around November. Late October, November, December or possibly in spring of next year, okay? And like I said, remember I said to you that your destiny is about the fixed signs. So which what seasons that I talk about? Winter, which is December, fall, which is October, November, and spring, which is um which is the um could be around May or April, okay? So remember I said that confirmation is here. So this person is going to come in, look around the number 7, the date seven is very important this person's going to come in and they're going to help you rebuild your life i don't feel like this is the person that you're going to end up being with forever i feel like this person is going to be more of a friend but this soulmate who comes in is going to show you that you can release yourself from toxicity okay there's something here about obsession about money or work all the time and this person is going to help show you how to heal and rebuild your life because there's something here that you still need to rebuild and you need to review your pro this person is going to help you review your progress and make plans for the next endeavor and that's why i don't feel like this person is the one they're just going to come in and help you heal because you've been having issues healing or getting over something so this person's more of a friend but you may fall in love with them but i don't feel like this is the the ultimate soulmate it's just a temporary person that helps you kind of heal and once that happens you meet someone new so i feel like there's at least one or two other people first that you're going to meet before you meet the one now the one is this the sun okay it could be a leo that you end up meeting or someone with strong leo energies this person's going to set you free okay and it says life is wonderful 
thrive through the power of positive thinking and inspiring success. So remember I was saying, do your affirmations. The first thing I want you to do when you wake up in the morning, I want you to find an affirmation, something that you really want. Could be love. Maybe you want your soulmate. I want you to speak as if it has already happened. I want you to say, and again, you can find any affirmation that you want online. It's up to you because you're your own person and you have your own freedom. So you could say, love is on its way to me. I deserve love. I deserve love. I deserve love. I deserve love. And just keep saying that over and over and over. And don't stop saying it. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Say it. Say it. Say it like a hundred times, 30 to a hundred times. And when you finally say that, they're going to come in and the sun is going to start shining. This is the person who is going to come in and be with you. And it's going to lead to success, but only if you're positively thinking, because what it ultimately leads to is the 10 of Raphael happily ever after you see, tell me more about this soulmate that's coming into Jessica's life. You have the three of pentacles, the 10 of cups and the moon. Wow. Yay. Okay. So I was talking about the moon in your whole entire reading and what you're going to finally conquer is your emotions, how you feel and how to express them. And this person's going to show you how to do that. This soulmate is going to be the one. Okay. So you're going to have children. If you want, you're going to end up being very happily in love. And it's only going to happen if you're able to cooperate with this person. Cooperation, Jessica is going to be key because there's going to be things in your life that come up and you're going to be quick to run away, quick to block, quick to not confront issues. These people are here to help you, but you also have to be open to helping yourself as well. This soulmate who's coming in, I'm seeing them be a Leo cancer. I'm getting a Pisces here or a Taurus, okay? And this person's gonna have those energies very strong in their chart. This person is very abundant. They're super happy. When you meet them, they just put a smile on your face. This is somebody who's all about hard working and they work. They like to work with other people. So they could work in groups or they could um, be someone that you work with, I'm getting as well too. This person likes to go on picnics. This is somebody who can own a black cat or you can own a black cat, I'm seeing. There's also an obsession here um, with unicorns. So unicorns i'm seeing sunflowers here i'm seeing picnics fruits tea this person's all about hard working and working with other people so you may end up meeting this person through your work or something to do with work okay this person is all about bringing you happiness and the only way jessica that you can get to this soulmate is if you go through these other soulmates okay there's at least one or two soulmates that you're going to meet they're not going to be the one they're just going to help you advance once they help you advance that is when you're going to be prepared to meet this person this actual soulmate you're meant to meet is going to be around I would say late July or early August, okay? Maybe even the springtime. But for you, meeting someone is only gonna happen when the seasons change. So when it's summertime, you have a chance of meeting your soulmate. When it's fall, you have a chance of meeting your soulmate winter or spring. If it's, let's say, if it's September, not gonna happen. If it's late November, not, not gonna happen. If it is, if it's between the seasons, then it's not gonna happen. You need to make sure when the seasons change, you got to be prepared. Okay. So I'm really seeing August for this soulmate. August, late July. I'm also getting, um, I'm also getting early March or late April. Okay. Or, um, early May. Okay. So that's what I'm seeing for your soulmates. Please mark those dates and prepare for when these people are going to come in. Okay. All right. Let's move on to your final portion of your reading. As you all can see, if you've been watching from the beginning to end, I don't look at time. I make sure I get the messages out to you, okay? So the time can be anywhere from an hour to two hours. It could be 30 minutes. Usually it's at least one hour, okay? Sometimes a little bit less depending on your situation. So I'm gonna end off your reading, Jessica, with your important astrological messages. I'm gonna pull three cards, clarify them, and tell you what you need to know and how you can harness the uh, luminaries as portals and gateways for you to achieve what it is that you want in this life, okay? Tell me more about Jessica and the astrological important influences that will be happening for the energy that's coming in. Three cards, one, two, three. 
Pluto and Uranus are very important um, signs. In your chart, Uranus is in the seventh house and it's retrograde. And in your sixth house, you have Pluto, okay, which is transformation. Okay, the first message for you is Uranus. So this is about you confronting change, okay? Whenever change comes in and it will come in over the next, you know, six months for you, you can't run away from these changes, okay? As, as, as difficult as it may be, you need to start confronting things, okay? That's the only way things are going to change in your life is what they're telling me. Tell me more about Uranus. There's a major change that's coming in for you in the next six months. That's what I'm intuitive. Four to six months. It's going to happen very soon. You have the Knight of Swords, the Lovers, and the Hangman. There's going to be um, somebody who comes into your life who brings you a lot of love. And you're going to be quick to rush towards this person. You need to be careful because when you rush towards this person, it is going to lead to some sort of change, unexpected change. And as soon as this change happens, you're going to shy away from it or pull away. And what Spirit is saying is you need to be open to change over the next four to six months in order to harness your ability to find this love that you're looking for, this true love. Because this is your overall message in your reading and in your chart. You want love. You strive when you're in love. When you're not in love, you are constantly in this place of questioning everything. So in over the next four to six months, don't just rush towards things and then pull back when things get difficult. You're going to know when things start to change and move for you and you're on the right path when things start to get difficult. When things start to get difficult, that's when you're being called to look at the situation from a different perspective and approach it differently. And that's what Uranus is talking about for you, okay? Next um, important element for you, astrological component, is the first house. Now, in your first house, what I found extremely beautiful for you, Jessica, is you have the sun and you have Venus on your ascendant. So again, you need to show what you want to attract. If you're somebody who wants to attract a loving, supportive partner, you need to be loving and supportive. You need to come across, even when you first meet someone, as loving and supportive. You need to come across as someone who is happy. Even though there's difficulties happening in your life, you still need to show and be the type of person that you want to attract. So over the next four to six months, you need to start working more and more on yourself, your image, the way you present yourself, how you think, how you act, how you respond to issues. That's how you're going to arrive. That's why it says arrival to what you want to achieve. Okay, number 25 and 39. I highly recommend checking out numbers 25 and 39 as well as 27 to see what the spiritual messages are behind those numbers. First house is clarified by the three of pentacles, the hierophant, and the four of wands. Yeah, woo! How are you going to attract marriage, happiness, happily ever after is by presenting yourself in the way in which the partner you want to attract. So by you showing who you want to attract by being that person, that person's going to come in quicker over the next four to six months for you. Okay. Now, final message for you. Number 27, you have Pluto rebirth over the next three to over the next three to six months, you're going to be going through a rebirth. You're going to change exact. You're going to completely change how you approach life, how you think about life, how you do all of that. Don't be afraid. Don't shy away from this change. These changes are necessary for you to move to the next level is what they're telling me. You have the six of wands, the seven of swords in the tower. You see when the changes come in, you got to find a way to overcome them. If you're able to overcome the challenges, everybody is going to praise you and you're going to be able to find what it is that you're seeking, okay? But your biggest message here, Jessica, is not to close yourself off to things that you don't like. Don't be sensitive to criticism when someone's criticizing or saying something about you. Maybe there's something that you need to change or learn about yourself. And I think the overall message for you is to pick up the pace. You need to start dealing with the issues at hand. If you have issues with this person from the past that you blocked, you need to write them a letter, talk to them, or express how you feel. And that's going to create some sort of... Um, and a, a blockage is going to be unlocked and you're going to be able to finally move to the next level. Okay. So what I'm going to do now for you is I'm going to end the reading there. I highly recommend that once you have your questions, you send them to us in the uh, live 
chat. And these questions that you're asking are going to help give you more clarity on what it is that you need. Okay. Now, of course, you may have came up with your questions before seeing this reading. So make sure you see the reading and you have any questions that come up in the reading. Make sure you have any questions that you want to ask the spiritual advisor. And like I said to all of you, if you do purchase a personalized live reading with me, then you do get time with the spiritual advisor where you're going to be able to sit and speak more thoroughly about your chart. Okay. And these, the spiritual advisor shows you about who you are. Okay. This is not necessarily about predictions or telling about your future. This is about you learning who you are, who you're dealing with, why you're dealing with this person, why you're feeling the way you're feeling in order for it to make sense for you to completely move forward in your life. Okay. So I want to thank everyone for tuning in, for joining me on the live here. Um, if you like this and this is something that you want, there is going to be an option to get your personalized reading, um, if, from me on my website, I only offer personal live readings on the channel. So if someone contacts you and says, hi, I'm Monica, do you want a personal reading? And they're giving you a reading over text message or on Instagram or Twitter or wherever they do whatever scamming that they do. It's not me. Okay. And I don't charge a hundred dollars for a personal reading. Okay. Or $200. I charge more. Okay. So you need to make sure that you are asking questions before you make your purchase. Okay. You can ask questions in the live chat. Customer service agent will contact you. Please do not email me about concerns that you have because I do not answer emails. You will have to go back on our website and speak to a customer service representative to get your information. Okay. And this way, everything's transparent. If you need to speak to a representative or you have questions, do it through our website. Links are below for that. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. And as always, I am sending you lots of love and light and I will see you on the next one. Bye.